But you know, we all have uh, some sort of limiting beliefs that we feel like, okay, the short-term pain is not worth the long-term gain because we, like you said, we don't, we never even seen the long-term gain. Well, we never seen that. You saying, Mr. Thompson, it really can get better? Oh, it, it can get better. But, you know, but, but they can't visualize it. They can't see it. They it, can't they, touch it. They, they need to feel they, it. They need to, they need to see it, right? Right. But they have to first make a commitment that they want to go there. And they first have to be shown where is there they're going. See, we do a lot of work, community work. I'm in the community all the time. Other brothers in the community all the time. And what we're all doing when we're talking to people is really trying to get them to visualize where we're going. Not even where we're going. Hell, where are you going? Well, I spend a lot of time talking to people about not where I'm going. I know where I'm going. And where you're going, you may not be able to go with me because it's not your path. I said, but there's a path for you. And I just want you to start following your own path. And I'll help you get on it. But it's going to be hard, and I can't be there with you all the time. So you deal with people with the truth right away. You, you give them the truth right away. You give them the facts right away. It's not playing with them. I got it. Like, maybe one or two more questions. I'll get you uh, back to uh, your work. I know you're going to work out now, right, <laughs> after this? <laughs> I'm so you know, jealous, you know, man. You know, I'm going to get it in. Bro. Yeah, I know. I did, I did a pre-workout this morning. I uh, cut the grass. I got like a double lot. So, you know. Double. But you know what? That's, yeah, if I cut the grass a lot, that's enough workout for me. No, but I'll jokes aside, you gotta get that sweat in, Mark. I know we. We're it's gonna, good for your skin too. Bro. Yeah, but I'm gonna. Yeah, we're going to. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. We're going to. Uh, no, no, no. Well, I, 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 you work in a, at your house? Do I work out at home? At home. No. Yeah. I gotta ride with you one day, man. I only can hang with me for like five minutes, and I'm done, man. Man, you. you no, I'm serious, good. man. I'm serious. I can't well, do. We gonna have you. I'm gonna just have you on a, a treadmill. Or That's what I'm saying. I, I got. I'm gonna ride with you one day for five minutes, man, you because you're inspiring me. The older I'm, we get, the more we have to lift and weights. It's so important. But what? Hey, I'm 49 in a couple of weeks, Brother, man. You, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? They don't even have to be. You don't even have to be trying to impress nobody. No, you well, just uh, we talk about the weight. We also talk about achieving goals because I'm saying it's all related because. Because you're only 30 something years old, right? Yeah, I'll be 36 at the end of the You're only 36 years old. Like I said, I'm 13 years your senior, right? Yeah. And believe me, man, you're doing a great thing about that, making this change in your 30s. In your 40s, man, it's much harder, man. Yeah. You should see the gray hair I really have, okay? Mm. When I take this dye out, <laughs> I look like Barack Obama with the gray hair. I'm serious, man. He's, only, he's a year older than me, and I'm telling you, one day I'm going to show you the gray hair. But all jokes aside, it's a 17 year old struggling. It's a 15 year old struggling. It's a seven year old struggling. And a lot of that struggle is, uh, is uh, I'm gonna talk about academic struggle. Mm. And I always tell a young person, for you to go to, to you to be the kind of person you need to be, you have to let your friends go. Mm. You almost have to put your family on the, on the back burner, meaning that you can't let your family influence you because they are here. Mm -hmm. If you want to go there, you're going to have to leave your family and your friends right here. A lot of young people don't want to do that. Because they're afraid to go off. They haven't seen anybody else go off. See, I, one thing I took away, uh, Eliana Van Zandt, I'm sure you remember that sister. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she, you see her every now and then nowadays. Mm -hmm. You used to see her long, a lot. She was on Oprah show. You should exactly. see that Oprah show she did with Greg. Yeah. And uh, that's one thing I take away from her that I always remember. She said, your family can be the noose around your neck. Let's be honest here. Your family can be the noose around your neck. I'm going to include some other folks. Your friends can be choking the life out of you right now through pleasure. I mean, you enjoying that company, y'all doing all kinds of fun things together. That weed is good. I, I swear that tequila is good. It is some good stuff. But they choking you. They killing you right now. They keeping you away from the goals you had set six months prior. And you have not achieved step one on that goal. You haven't even written them down yet. They still in your head somewhere, playing around while you smoking and you drinking that old good tequila. It feel good, don't it? But it's leaving you behind and you're rapidly being tossed aside and being left behind. So it's back to commitment. So, and the commitment begins with first commitment to self. Not to Siron, not to Ray Thompson, not to Mark, to you, to yourself. Because I don't want, I don't want to deal with you if you haven't been committed to yourself. Because I'm almost assured some commitment to me if you've been committed to yourself, based on the agreements that we may have. Yeah, Mr. Thompson, last question. I already like to talking about opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we get a lot of great opportunities in our life, whether we're 10 years old or 27, 47. Mm -hmm. And we just don't take advantage of we them. We don't take advantage. For a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. if, so, if somebody asks you for help, and I would tell people, you call Ray Thompson. Ray Thompson is a brilliant opportunity because you got one as a kid, right. a child, if you right. will. You went off to a boarding school. You yeah. left the hood and went to the boarding school. I did. If you didn't go to the boarding school, 
you would not be the Ray Thompson that we're talking I, I about still, right now. I still wonder, I still ponder that thought. Like, what would I have been? What would I have if been? If you were taken out of the hood and to the, going to the boarding school. If I, if, I, if I didn't go anywhere else. Let me tell you about that boarding school as well. Um, I went to a school called Kosminski over there on 54 Finellas. I grew up and down Drexel. This is the days before gentrification, right? Right. <laughs> this is the old, this is the Drexel that was still kind of wild. And uh, anywhere between 46 and uh, 52nd on Drexel, up and down Drexel. My mom sort of moved around a bit because rent was always going up and she was always looking for the bargain price. She had to. She had two kids. And um, went to Kosminski. Kosminski had this program where they say, if you do well in, your, if you're, if you do well in the school, we're going to figure out a way to get you into a boarding school if, if, that's what, if that's what your grades say and that's what you are committed to do. So seventh grade year roll around. I took the I, I took at that time it was the Iowa test of basic skills. Oh, you go back Iowa, yeah. Okay. And uh, I, mean, I, I did well, but I didn't do well enough to get into the, the boarding school program. So I pleaded with the the, the person who was the director because I knew this was my opportunity. I'm going. I got to get out of my mama's house. You're right. I got to get out this neighborhood. Were you about thirteen? I was about twelve, thirteen. Okay, twelve, thirteen. I said I had to get out. This is when a decision was made right. in my head. I said I got to get out of here. I, I can't do this. I, you know, I'm, I'm too much of a loner now. I'm a lone wolf. I mean, right. so there's only going to be a couple of things for me to do: is have a whole bunch of babies and women, or to be running these streets with one of these gangsters. You know what I'm saying? And I, knowing me and knowing my heart, I want to be on top. I want to be number one. So I'm, I'm sure a life of death and crime was coming to me. I was making these, these thoughts was happening to me. And you know though, the boarding school is going to be your ticket out. Even though I was going to church every Sunday and these thoughts was there and I right. knew the boarding school was going to be my ticket out. So I went away to a, a place called uh, Culver Military Academy in Culver, Indiana. Set it on a beautiful campus, 1,500 acres. W woke up every morning to the sun shining Ma on me. Mainly white? Uh, not only, uh, it was uh, uh, about 80% white. 80% white? Uh, uh, the other percentage was broken down between uh, Latin Americans, Latin Americans from, from their home countries coming mm -hmm. to Culver. These rich families paying to send their children mm -hmm. to these boarding schools. I went to school with a lot of very rich people. It was a boarding school, well. for like a military school for affluent, like you see in the movies. Very like you see in the movies, very man. very affluent. Yeah. And it was, a, uh, it was a girl's school as well. The girls were under sort of a, 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 a prefectorial system, which is really based on girls' British boarding schools, right? <laughs> Jeez. And so these girls wore kilts and the socks. They came up to their knee, you know what I'm saying? It was cool. very classic, $30,000. It was a, At that time, it was 25000 a year tuition, including room and board. Um, and I was on a full ride, you know. And I had, a t I had the time of my life, and I met a lot of amazing people. And, and this, is what, this is what put the light on for me. I went to a friend's house. Illinois. And... Uh, he had an elevator in his home and it blew my mind. I said, you got an elevator in your house. So what those experiences did to me was expose me. It wasn't that I was trying to get the house with the elevator. It was like, Ray, the truth of the matter is no matter what anybody tells you, the sky's the limit. Even, even don't allow your blackness, your poverty, the ignorance in your family and amongst you separate you from what you can do with your own life. But you go to, but you got to leave that family. You, you got to leave those you, friends. You, you, you may have to. You may have to break some relationships. Yes. You yes. may have to sort of. Some relationships may be hurt in the process. Right. Even they may be just temporary, but they're gonna have to be some separation. Right. It may. It may be some separation. You. Yeah. You may have to, and you may have to be alone on a lot of this. Yeah. You may not get the support you expect from the people who love you the most. Right. They will try to do their best, but again, they don't know where you're going, so how are they going to see how to help you the But right if a young way? person is, is watching this show right now, I don't care if they're 17 or 27, 37, 47, they can mm -hmm. call you, you can help them. I can, they call me, they can, they can go and get the help, but they have to be wanting to get the help too. Because one thing I learned here is that... Um, if you ain't ready, don't call. If you ain't ready, don't call me. Okay. If you're not ready, don't call me because you'll be wasting my time, but more importantly, you'll be wasting your time. See, my time is becoming more and more important to me as I get older. And I'm, I'm not old yet. A lot of people say, Ram, you ain't that old. It's all relative, man. It's you know, all relative. You know, but, uh, but I understand the value of time as, mm -hmm. I, as my age increases. And your children get older? And, my, and I watch them get older. Yep. And I watch them become more hairy men as That's opposed right. to young little boys. That's you know, right. And they're looking more and more like a man. And I'm like, my God, I am watching life right before That's me. That's right. And it's so critical and so important that, that we start to value life. But when they call you, they, they, you got to be ready. If you oh, ain't you ready, ready, if you're, you're looking ready, for you looking for play. a hand up or a hand out, no, I, you I can forget it. about it. I don't it. have it. I don't have it. But if you're ready, if you're ready, I got I got a program for you. 
I got a program for yourself. Don't be scared. No, you can't be scared. <laughs> it's going to be scary, though. It's going to be scary. And you may feel alone, but you might need to be alone in that darkness for a bit before that light comes shining in. I think, you know, I, I won't get too religious, but they say the light shining if the darkness and the darkness comprehended if not. That means that the light is always there, but that darkness that's in your mind don't understand nothing about the light that's been in front of you all your life. And with that, I'll say stay committed. Be committed, but first to yourself. So important. So important.